वेलकम टू एशिया फॉरन सीरीज चैप्टर नेपाल ऑर्गेनाइज बाय एशियन लिटरेरी सोसाइटी एंड जर्नल ऑफ एशियन आर्ट कल्चर एंड लिटरेचर एज यू ऑल नो एशियन लिटरेरी सोसाइटी इज अ प्लेटफॉर्म डेडिकेटेड टू प्रमोट एशियन आर्ट कल्चर एंड लिटरेचर एंड आवर दिस इनिशिएटिव इज अ सिंसियर एफर्ट इन दिस रिगार्ड सो विदाउट टेकिंग मोर टाइम आई वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस टुडेस मॉडरेटर वन्ना हसीन Vanna Basin is an ex-banker turned writer and artist based on a program. She is a published author and a recipient of numerous prestigious awards for her literary contributions. A few notable among them are Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee Award 2018 by Arpita Foundation, Gold Smith Award English Story 2019 by Asian Literary Society. Her debut book Roots Roots was awarded Best Debut Poetry Book Award by Asian Literary Society in February 2021. She was awarded Dr. Sarvapalli Radha Krishnan Award in 2021. Now I request Vandana to kindly introduce our eminent guest of today's session. Thank you, Manoj, for the introduction. Uh, welcome everyone to the Asia Forum. Uh, to uh, Asia Forum today. Uh, today we have with us notable guests from Nepal. Uh, I would like to begin the session with words of Martin Luther, who said that if you want to change the world. pick up your pen and write how beautiful is that words are an inexhaustible wealth of magic that we all writers have we all know that writing brings about a unique perspective to common things or events it's a source of inspiration to some road to spirituality for others as well as carries a magical touch while empathizing with people in times of grief today we have with us three eminent personalities from nepal who have made exemplary contribution in the field of writing and would enlighten us today about the role of writing and literature in nepal uh, before introducing our guests for asia forum i would like to introduce nepal in a verse of my own uh, nepal the land of mount everest the birthplace of buddha the land of temples the birthplace of revered sita dignified by heroism of brave gurkhas accentuated by the beauty of himalayas a land of diversity a paradise called nepal i would like to welcome mr yuyutsu sharma mr sarath pradhan and mr arun buddha thoki from the great land of heights and depths nepal uh we would start today's session with the introduction of mr yuyutsu sharma mr yuyutsu sharma is a world renowned himalayan poet and translator he has published 10 poetry collections he has held numerous workshops in creative writing and translation at various reputed universities of north america and europe currently mr sharma is the editor of pratik a quarterly magazine of contemporary writing he is also recipient of various fellowships and grants for his work in literature and translation mr sharma it's a privilege and an honor to have you us to have you here with us today so would you like to uh, say a few lines about the session today Thank you, Vandana. Is uh, is it okay? Am I audible? Yes, sir, you're audible. Is my voice clear? Yes, Thank sir. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's a real pleasure to be here today, uh, sharing this panel with my close friends, hosted by uh, uh, my very lovely friend from Delhi, Vandana. It's a it's an honor to be here today and to talk about the beautiful country that is Nepal. Uh, uh, so. Uh, As you know, uh, today our subject is uh, literature, and you mentioned uh, paradise that Nepal is. Uh, so I have a poem uh, uh, that I would like to read. Uh, sure, sir. It's called. Uh, uh, you want me to read now or later? Yes, sir. Please, sir. It would be a pleasure to hear you. Okay. As, as you were introducing Nepal, you were saying Nepal is a paradise. So uh, I have a poem. You know, in the Himalayas, the word for Himalayas in Sanskrit is Devatatma, meaning place where soul of the god lives. And right. uh, Himal has been uh, for centuries a great place of for all the rishis and all the holy people uh, for salvation. Uh, in our myths in Mahabharata, in Ramayana, Mahabharata is celebrated a great, great destination uh, from all over the world, uh, and our scriptures celebrate. So I wanted to read this poem. Uh, which celebrates uh, the Mount. I go. I'm missing the Himalayas these days because I'm stuck in the pandemic, and there's no way I can go 
back to the mountains that I love so much and write about them uh, for a living, you know. Uh, so this poem is called Little Paradise Lodge. It's from my book, Annapurna Poems, which is my selected poems. Uh, Little Paradise Lodge. My pen frozen against the daggers of Annapurnas. On an oblong, shapeless plank, chopped from a sandalwood tea trunk, and used as a table, I place my elbows and hold my face in my hands. Blinding snows of the Annapurna Ridge, mutually shining in the eye of my mind, I sit in the spacious courtyard of your paradise lodge, deciphering shill notes of birds in the mossy trees. One bird initiates a lilting note like our meeting, while others let loose a record of breath vessels ending with question tags. Can I stay longer, at least one more day, in your little paradise lodge? Two birds playing in the crimson cherry tree still a chord that seems like opening up of the blossoms of our bodies. Would you take me away and marry me? But what about this electric whistle? The cicada's constant cheer, cheer, cheer. The struggle of our breathless bodies against the dark suit of the night. The pigeons strutting freely in your courtyard, coo like exhausted goaters, climbing the mule paths in the singing gorges. Their guttural quint qua, quint quint qua, quint quint qua. It seemed to be using a human language. A kind of hushed speech robbers my cues. Love, in the courtyard of your little paradise lodge, I see silence turning flowers into daggers. A herd of cows shuffles past me in a joyous mood, festive like young girls going to a hillside fair, saying, don't you go away, brother. Back until dusk with presents. A cuckoo passes overhead. It's this thing, ka, ka, ka. Please do not leave me alone. I'm utterly alone, stuck on the last mountain of the world. And beyond me, just one more mountain where they say a deity lives, guarding a tiny Turkish lake. And thereafter, nothing but realm of melting snows where souls of the gods live. Thank you. How beautiful. What a beautiful imagery. And I was actually transported to Himalayas. I've never been there. But I mean, your poem really took me there. Very nice. Very nice, sir. Um, before moving to uh, our other panelists, I would just have one small question for Mr. Yuyutsu. And then I will move on to Mr. Sarad. Uh, so what is what do you think is the role of uh, Nepalese literature in shaping the thinking of the youth of Nepal? Well, uh, you know, uh, as you know, in historically speaking, uh, Nepal is a country born out of the mouths of uh, poets and translators. Yes. The first poet, uh, uh, whose name is, uh, you know, Bhanu uh, uh, he translated uh, Ramayana into Nepali. And on the basis of that language, Nepal was formed. All that, the, 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 the main, uh, the Pitriyan Shah, the main ruler, he, he, uh, he consol consolidated these small little principalities on the basis of Nepali language. If there was no okay. Nepali language, there will be no Nepal. And there were no literature. So it's, right. it's Nepali language that unified these uh, principalities with different varied you know, uh, uh, principles, languages, cultures, art, uh, architecture, and made one ne unified Nepal. So literature has played a vital role in the in the past, and it used to play a vital role in the coming years, especially uh, in bringing a democracy in Nepal, because poets have played vital roles in uh, in Nepali polity, especially poet like Gopal Prasad Rimal, who was the first poet who started protest movement against. The despotic Rana rulers, and is the, is the, and they would go to the temples and shrines and recite these poems, and the rulers were thinking they were they were just doing some religious work, they are doing worship. In fact, they were uh, they were the first voices of protest against these despots, and when they discovered that this is happening, the rulers uh, grabbed this poet and and uh, sent him to Banaras, oh, where okay. he was 
they thought he's crazy. And uh, the doctors were so stupid, they pulled a rib out of his back, thinking he will, he will focus on the pain and not on the political stuff. And he came back <laughs> in very bad shape and died limping in the streets of Kathmandu. He's the, our Whitman. He's the first father of modern prose poetry, this poet. So poets, uh, the, the, the poets have played wild a role in shaping the, the face of Nepalese polity, in bringing democracy, in ushering the dawn of modern world. And uh, he, 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 Rimal, he shed the Sanskrit meter, which was decadent, which was uh, used by these uh, royal court poets. And he, brought, he ushered this new world. And today, his, his influence is major. The later poets, Bhupi Shetan and others, who came into the, into the modern world, uh, uh, used, uh, like uh, even the younger poets are much in awe of Rimal. So uh, younger poets, and especially in the in the in, a, in the panchayat system before 1990, before mm -hmm. the multi-party system came to Rimal, poets had mm -hmm. a vital role to play in bringing uh, right. uh, bringing down uh, this uh, one-party system. Even today, uh, uh, poets, uh, although they have been divided among uh, various political parties, uh, but uh, and there is little bit of vacuum. Mm -hmm. Uh, after 1990, uh, because of the, the politicians don't really care about poets, you know, literature, and because these uh, uh, they are more worried about their party caters. And, true. Uh, so, true. But still, uh, poetry plays a vital role. Poetry is a thriving uh, little thing. Uh, you know, uh, the leading newspapers publish poetry every Sunday, every Saturday supplement. Okay. Uh, there are poetry festivals. There are small little mm -hmm. poetry readings all across uh, Kathmandu okay. and all, all across Nepal. And so poetry survives and thrives and, 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 and lives in a very powerful way in small little principalities, in small little pockets. So good to hear that. Uh, so good to uh, hear uh, that. It's, it's, it's that way. So basically, um, see, uh, we all know that, you know, a um, few years back, 50 years back, you know, writers and poets played a very important role. But um, we see that you know writing has changed literature has literature has changed technology has you know advanced a lot people are moving people have so many other distractions you know earlier in an era of you know no internet and no other sources of entertainment people were hooked to books people were hooked to literature but now we are saying you know slowly all that being shifted but i still feel that you know um, a mass um, there is still a majority of people who really want to know about the literature and who really are moved by the words of the writers and like you said you know over there also in nepal also the poetry i mean writing thrives you know and it is it survives and thrives and in the heart of the people it is very good to know that i'm really happy to uh, know more about nepal from you in that respect yeah, i would say i would say if you want to know the soul of nepal you have to know the yeah. poetry of nepal you oh. can't know the soul of nepal without wow. the poetry of nepal the fiction is very uh, kind of commercial and very weak, and it's very, very Western oriented. It's, you know, they are kind of copycats. But poetry is a genuine Nepali thing. And okay. it's the poets who make uh, the difference. But because of the internet and all this, uh, you know, the, the uh, kind yes. of, uh, publishing and, you know, the, the, these gimmicks, uh, mm -hmm. poetry has suffered a setback. But with, the, with Facebook mm -hmm. and with, the, with the, the internet, with Instagram, the poets have been active in, the, in connecting with yes. each other. And doing yes. Zoom readings and and uh, uh, putting up these new new groups. Uh, so yeah. poetry has uh, uh, the internet has a help as well as hindered. Uh, so it's, it's yeah, very internet has helped. Certainly, it has helped us connect. Like we are able to connect with you know people from all over Asia. This Asia Forum is also an initiative towards bringing you know uh, all the Asian countries together in uh, in terms of writing and in literature. So internet has certainly helped. I mean, it's the same thing, you know, it has pros as well as cons. We have to see what our take is on that. Uh, no, thank you, Mr. The current, thank you. the current program is also a proof of that, that we are talking today what? about. Yeah, exactly. Culture, about, and I'm bringing my young uh, friends, Sarad and Arun, and we, we are able to communicate and, and, uh, and all other Nepalese poets can share this. So this itself is a proof that the internet is, is, a, is a bliss as well. Yes, it is, certainly. Thank, thank you, Yusuf, sir. I would now move on to Sarad sir. Good evening, uh, Sarad sir. Welcome to Asia Forum. It's a privilege to host you today. And I would uh, like to give a brief introduction of uh, Mr. Sarad Pradhan. Uh, Mr. Sarad Pradhan has been writing for more than three decades, contributing to different magazines and journals of Nepal, both in Nepali and in English. 
He has been the editor of several books. He has worked as a journalist with the Kathmandu Post for a decade, and now he regularly contributes articles in Nepali on various online portals of Nepal dedicated to Nepalese literature. Uh, Sarat sir, uh, a few words from you on uh, about uh, our initiative of this Asia Forum, as well as you know uh, uh, your sources of inspiration for writing or what all do you write about? Um, uh, thank you so much, Bandana. Um, it's great hearing um, you say about the Nepali poetry. You already uh, spoke about the how the Nepali poetry evolved in the yes, modern context, right from the one of the two. What I do is now, uh, uh, I'm now preparing to do one uh, readings of my prose and the one reading of a poetry by our great poet, Naksin Prasad Devagata in the later period. Okay. And okay. They, it is a great initiative to have uh, this forum like Asia Forum because now poetry as a use, we always uh, uh, speak about this, that poetry doesn't have any border. Poetry, literature True. is a borderless uh, things, you know. We can communicate with our language also. Sometimes we listen to Bengali poetry. We, we love it, Rabindran Tagore, without understanding Bengali very much. So really? sometimes we listen to the poetry, Hindi poetry. We love the Hindi poetry without much understanding uh, uh, the meaning of the Hindi poetry as well. Sometimes Urdu poetry also. So it is a kind of a um, uh, kind of a forum that brings us together. Poetry, literature that brings us together in a one pocket. So. Like, for example, the Asian language, Asian literatures, the literature that represent Nepali, Hindi, anything, Arabic, uh, Persian, everything. So it's a kind of uh, initiative that uh, makes us, you know, uh, proud of being uh, Asians rather than being a uh, Nepali, rather than Indian or Bhutani or Bangladesh. So um, I, I still remember, uh, it's you, you know, that uh, you have brought out one um, editions of Asian literatures back in 1985-86 with the Nakul Silvas. Have you, right. do you remember, Yusu? 1990. 1990. Yusu, Yusu right. has brought out one magazine together with the okay. late Mr. Nakul Silwal. That magazine is called The Burger. That magazine okay. covered the almost, uh, it's a very thick magazine, and that covers the poetry of almost all the Asians' poetry. That is the okay. how the U.S. started uh, bringing the Asian poetry together back in, I mean, maybe 30 years uh, ago, from the from okay. the 30 years, you know, down this line. So okay. um, this is my take, Bandana. So the magazine is uh, that magazine is not uh, did not continue for long. Uh, it was uh, uh, it was a Nepali magazine, but only we brought single one issue. issue in it. One issue. The guy yeah. died. He committed suicide. He had some trouble. Oh, so okay. Uh, yeah. So we so, so now I'm running pretty, uh, which is uh, regular. Any country. You yeah. Contribute when the uh, so I should. I will. I certainly will, sir. I certainly will. Yeah. Um, you, sir. I think uh, you you must uh, do something to bring out the second editions of the same poetry in this different form. I mean, in the, in the modern form. I think you should do something to bring out that because many people they don't know much about this uh, poetry collection that you brought out with Nakul Silwal back in 1990. Right, right. We should bring a, 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 a revised edition, right? Yeah, very, yeah, yeah. very nice. Yeah. yeah, because things uh, I think gather dust over time, so one needs to revive them again and again. I, I, it caught my interest when you said, you know, that it used to be a magazine of all the Asian writers. So that's why I asked that, was there another issue or not? It was because, a special uh, issue Asia. So it was in Asia. Yeah, yeah, yeah Asia. I Asia. Remember that's there's right. a, there's yes. poetry from the Japan also, Vietnam, Japan, so many countries. He hired yeah. me. He said, we, we, I want to bring us Asian issue. And uh, yeah. so I worked for him and I brought this issue as a guest okay. editor. Yeah. But okay. unfortunately, this man passed away. He committed suicide. Yeah. Which is so oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think you should, uh, I mean, take forward his project and start on that again, I guess. Sure. Yeah, uh, um, Mr. Sarad, would you like to read uh, any of your uh, writings? Uh, I have uh, I written one article back in 1996 uh, regarding of oh. uh, um, a writers, a very much uh, known writer, you soon know okay. him very well, Mr. Tarnath Sarma. Um, oh. He was a very prominent writer of Nepal. Now he's in eight, late 80s. So this okay. is an article about um, his, you know, the name of the article is Tarana Sarma, an Odishi from a village to the international fame. 
Okay. Uh, Blizzard critics, a one time Marxist thinker, a fusion novelist, and aggressive essayist. That was Taranath Sarma of 60s. Now he's the father of two. He is a travel writer, a translator, a hungry student of the world literature, a poet, a flexible critic, a lyricist, and essayist. This is Taranath Sarma of today. To make the end meet, I have to translate whatever I like it or not, especially since I am not engaged in any other money-making job, says Tarna Sarma. Sarma started his literary career with the criticism piece in uh, Sati, a literary magazine published from Darjeeling in 1951. He has come a long way now earning a name of himself in the field of Nepali literature. Influenced by Marxist philosophy during his early days, Sarma was absurdly hard on the literary works. This was reflected in his review of the other works. One of the Sarma's work in the generic, including Watlain Haru, a collection of critical review, Pachimko Kehi Mahan Sait, his other works include a critical survey of Nepali literature in the collection of criticism named Bhanu Bhakta Dekhin Tesro I Am Samvam, Samra Samka Kriti Haru, on the works of the Balkan Sam, uh, full works on the history of Nepali literature as the Nepali site Kako Itiyas. Sarma has considerably softened his voice in the other works. In, early, in his early years, I was bursting with enthusiasm. I wanted to write what I felt. My early criticism lacks the ethistic sense as it was the outpours of my feeling, but it is not so with my current criticism, says Sarma. During his stay in Banaras as a student, Sarma, along with the Balkishka Pokhrel, had started Jharro Andolan, a literary movement that emphasized pure writing in Nepali, not to include Sanskrit and other language. The influence of this movement can be seen in the collection of like the Namaste 1961, uh, Zomar um, Kohru, 1968, Jivan Sahal uh, in 1975. This, in this essay collection, he appears to be the progressive writer. He is candid, courageous in putting forth his view, but the movement he had started is no longer in existence. After studying in linguistic, I came to a conclusion that Nepali language has to borrow words from other languages, that is, if they are necessary, but it is uh, but the use should be in appropriate place, he says. He believes that after the completions of the Nepali English Dictionary by R.L. Turner in 1930, more than 40,000 new words have been coined in Nepali language. Born in 1934 in the eastern region of Nepal, Tarna Sarma completed his education up to intermediate in Darjeeling. Some of his teachers include Parasmani Pratan, Surabhikam Gemali, Dharindan Sarma. These sharp and witty writers in the meantime got close to the Parasmani Pratan, who, who published Bharati literary magazine. Similarly, late Rupanaran Sina, Siva Kumar Rai, Indra Sundas of the Darjeeling, and Leknath Devakata Sama influenced him greatly in his literary life. Early novels of Tarana Sarma revolves around a particular area. He draws the regular rarity of the violence in the lives of the people of the Sunkosi areas in Ujalo Parda. The, the blackout. I think that blackout has been published by um, uh, Yusuz uh, yeah. from his uh, Niralapur publications, yeah. and uh, and centered around the story of Gurung Youth. Sarma's another uh, novel, Mero Katha, My Story, talk about the life of the Tibetan Burmo Gurungs, tribe regional Kaski and neighborhood. Suli is about the urban life of middle class. Suli is another novel. Is uh, urban life of a middle class Nepali in Kathmandu. The books try to analyze the woman's psychology and character. Although written in 1970, its theme is still re relevant in the present day context. Jamarko, the, uh, the black, uh, Jazalko, the flag fascist in 1988, and Nepal, Deki uh, America, some from Nepal to America, have broken his earlier tradition in this novel. The characters travel outside the country too. In 1970, Tarana Sarma received the prestigious Madan Puruskar for his most acclaimed travelogy, Belai Tiro Gara Linda, uh, rambling in and around the Belai uh, in the Britain. So he actually 
uh, he was the first um, uh, person to start a modern writing of travel writings in Nepali. And that and mm -hmm. Sarma's romanticize is reflected in this book. Um, Patal Prabhas uh, stay in US, which was uh, published in 1985, is about uh, his uh, nearly a decade long stay in the USA. Sarma says that his uh, later books are more mature in style and theme than this earlier one. Another dimension of the Dharana Sarma is his ability to write English equally well. This is seen in many of his writings and translations. Columns of Fire, a collection of eyes, uh, lyrical ballad. I think it is published by Nirala. Is it Column yeah, of Fire? Yeah. yeah. Lyrical poems by Chadani Sa. She was our former queen. And uh, um, uh, and the Naso, the short story, and Sumnima, the novel by the BP Korala, our former prime ministers, have been translated by Sarma from Nepali to English. A PhD holder in linguistics from the University of Wisconsin and Madison, USA, Tara Sarma taught linguistic Nepali culture and literature in Nepal and abroad. Uh, he, uh, Mahendra Mala, a Nepali, te liter uh, Nepali textbook of, for secondary schools, is a product of his. Um, and for the Spanish speaking job of editing books for his students, he had received a special prize from the Ministry of Education. Um, so I don't, I think, uh, need to write, uh, you know, uh, read out the more because this is the what um, uh, Tarana Sarma is all about. He is very prominent literary critics of Nepal, a very revered one. And they, and the, the best thing about Mr. Sarma is he can write both English and Nepali equally. Yeah. So he was the editor of the Rising Nepal. Um, uh, that was the uh, Nepal's first English uh, daily magazine published from the government side. So he was the editor of that magazine for a brief period in 19, I think, I believe in 1993 to 94 or 95. Over to... He's a very big figure. He's a very big, he's my favorite. Very prominent figure, figure yeah. I mean, very I... Very prominent. He deserves uh, all the accolades. He's uh, in, I think he's in the 80s now, very old. Yes, it, but yeah. he's the best writer of Nepal. Great writer. Yeah, I mean, really, it was quite informative for us all to know about him. And I mean, such a prolific writer, you know, somebody who has written so much and uh, I mean, who's, you know, uh, Mr. Sarat could not stop writing about it. So I'm sure he must be a very great person. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sarat, sir. He's very, Thanks so much. He's very yes, sir. He's like very, a very fire brand. You know, we published one of his uh, columns in Pratik many okay. years ago, and it caused a lot of stir, a lot of... Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Actually, he criticized the Michael lot for translating that Munamadana of Devgata, right. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. He, I mean, he was very, very, very harsh on this British yeah. okay. uh, guy who tried to okay. translate Nepal literature. He didn't even know the basics of... And Oxford published his book, which was funny, you know. <laughs> so, he wrote a very interesting review. Oxford University Press in Delhi published his book. And this guy doesn't know the basics of Nepali language. So this was okay. very, uh, very funny. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It was, it was, it was. We, we published that, uh, his review in Pratik and it was, and he, the guy called me from the UK saying, why did okay. you publish this? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, it was, uh, so the critics are also needed, actually. People who are able to speak yeah. the harsh truth are also needed. Yeah. Uh, moving on. Mr. Arun uh, Budathoki. Um, welcome, Mr. Arun, to the Asia Forum. Uh, I would like yeah. to give us. Thank you. Uh, I would like to give a short introduction of Mr. Arun. He's a uh, he's a Nepali journalist, poet, and writer. His articles have appeared in various popular newspapers and magazines, including the Telegraph, the Financial Times, the Guardian, and the Huffington Post. He, he has also contributed to Al Jazeera, the Globe, Mail, the Globe, Mail, BBC Radio 4, and Toronto Life as a fixer or reporter. He has keen interest in investigative, narrative, and multimedia journalism. Mr. Arun has also published a few books, Prisoner of an iPad, Edge, Second in Love, uh, Second in Love is the short stories, and Prisoner of an iPad and Edge are the poetry books. Welcome, Mr. Arun. It's a pleasure to have you here with us. Mr. Arun has keen interest in poetry reading, uh, in poetry writing. And um, so, uh, Mr. Arun, um, would you like to share a few words about uh, the initiative of Asian Literary Society by organizing the Asian Forum? And then maybe you could read out 
one poem of yours. Um, thank you, Vandana Ji, and uh, thank you so much for having me in this platform. And uh, firstly, I would like to thank my uh, my guru, Yutsu Sarma sir, uh, because of him and you and this platform, uh, I have I'm having this opportunity to speak with all of you. Um, I think it's a great platform to bring uh, poets and writers from different South Asian nations in in one platform and give the the opportunity to you know share our poetry. I think it kind of uh, connects us and uh, gives us the bond when uh, at times we have these you know political uh, differences. I think literature plays the role of you know uh, you bridging know, the gap. Yeah, bridging the gap. So I think this platform is really good uh, for that. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, would you recite a poem of yours for us, sir? Yeah, sure. Um, so this is uh, my book. So title is, is Pris Yeah, Prisoner of of an iPad, and like what we're discuss title, discussing before. Uh, my guru uh, gave the name of, uh, for this book. <laughs> you, my, you, you, sir. <laughs> yeah. So some specific reason for giving such a title. It reminded me of my son who is always on the iPad. You know, he's all. <laughs> when I read the title, yeah. when I read the title, even I thought of my son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah always. His, his, this is the title. A very beautiful poem. I don't know the marvelous okay. poem. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I could read some of my poems. Uh, yes, please, so the title is "New Song." Nothing is new in this city, the streets sanctified siren, and the sky singing, its breath comforting the troubled heart. The sofa temple is old as a bull, always eager to charge with no fear in its eyes. We are death-defying monsters, we are silver and exact. I'm prisoner of iPod, I'm prisoner to the mortal music, while heavens rejoice in an eternal music. Eagles imitate and the sky dances in joy. I remain a broken pot. Music is poured onto me. I explode ecstatic. Do not plug your ears. This is what I have discovered. Take it now and sing the new. Thank you. Wow. Short and sweet. Very nice. Yeah. So one <laughs> more from you before I move on to uh, you, you to serve for a second round. Sorry? I don't know. One more from you before I move on to you, sir. Oh, okay, okay, okay. One more poem, yeah, yeah. Okay, so may, maybe I'll recite a longer one if that's okay, or should I recite uh, maybe another whichever shorter you, one? Whichever you want to recite. I think we have 20 minutes in hand. Oh, okay. So, uh, title is The Face Keeper. <clears throat> I've kept a face intact, spotless, polishing it for quarter of a century. I've kept it in the hour hand, in the monotonous creaks, under the dismembered cell, on the scratch table, through the eye of a sewing sanguine needle. The face travels, swims, walks, flies. The face acts like a face. The face is not a face. Oh yes, I've kept a face intact. I've kept a face hidden, imprisoned, amputated it for 25 years. I've kept it in the butcher's knife, inside the mystified slaughterhouse. Between the pig's jaws tinkling from the cowbell, the sewing machine cutting and stitching the face. Royal apparel, purple is the color best. I've used clothing chemicals, detergents, washing powders. The face remains intact. The face is a brutal history. Oh yes, I've kept your face intact. I have nine fingers, one is an abomination. I've drawn your face with that finger drawn on the slopes of Himalayas in the trails of Annapurna, blew it off in the dust of Mustang, floated it on Kosi River. The face is the number one stalker. The face boost for being evergreen, perpetual, inexhaustible. The face is a history gone wrong. Oh yes, I've kept a face intact. I've kept a face intact and have smeared mine. Thank you.
how poignant how poignant very nice i'm going to note it down some words written face acts like a face face is a brutal history yeah. <laughs> face is history kept it uh, face is history gone wrong history gone wrong oh my god <laughs> very beautiful and very deep and uh, poignant i would say thank you thank, thank you. you for reading out such a beautiful poem for us uh, i would move on to you yutsu sir so coming back to you sir i have one question for you and then i would request you to read one more poem of yours from your treasure um so literature um, has a very important role in restoring the balance when the society undergoes a paradigm shift due to political or cultural unrest you also mentioned a while ago we've seen mythology and fiction addressing socio cultural matters expressing views without any fear of criticism but uh, there's been a tremendous change in the way writing has evolved over the years do you think that contemporary writers writers like you know maybe arun ji me or you know people like us do they write responsibly or is it only to gratify the readers or increase the likes on their posts rather than voicing their true opinions and views or maybe you know what needs to be addressed as per the needs of this time do you really think that we are acting responsibly we as in the young writers you know the present day writers yeah uh, it's a very important question uh, i think uh, uh, with the with the current nepali scene especially talking of nepal and, and at large of south asia yes please yeah uh, there's uh, uh, you know young writer there's a, there's the whole uh, onslaught on poetry of uh, a kind of commercial fiction uh, okay that, uh, yeah that the novel big novel and the advanced royalties and and that there's everybody should write a novel and uh, it's a kind of blockbuster and comes from uh, uh, western world from america and canada and uk mm-hmm. and they come to india and then, you know it, it comes over to, to bangladesh and to nepal and sri lanka and it's a kind of uh, a fake narrative you know that uh, uh, you are given advanced royalties and you can become a big writer and so that that has taken uh, quite a negative impact on on the on the main main flow stream of nepalese writing Uh, because uh, even even uh, very good poets who were writing they went under this fake uh, thing that oh uh, we can write a novel and become uh, millionaire or mm-hmm. become big overnight uh, and the poetry uh, writing literature in these small little countries is is a very genuine uh, kind of uh, very modest uh, kind of act mm-hmm. it's it's a very uh, humble way of living leading a life it has stayed like this all these years unless Uh, these these uh, multinational companies came and started flouting this idea uh, of uh, of this of this kind of blockbuster uh, writing literature as since the times of kalidasa or, or, or you know tulsidas or bhanu bhakt or you know these uh, vimal has been more of a survival struggle uh, 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 and, uh, uh, an attempt to breathe and bring justice to the world so and uh, the literature the currently is facing this trouble uh this uh, this this assault on on the regular uh paradigms uh, regular mm. standards uh, or kind of modes of writing okay. and how it stays because the nepalese uh, poets don't write for money uh, they don't get any money even fictional people in spite of all the all the all the cry and all the noise they get nothing you know it's right. very hard to sell books in in this world because people don't know and especially poets i almost every every week i get a book, poetry book as a gift from a poet probably he has sold his wife's earrings or his mother's bangles or he sold a piece of land you know poetry is a passion this madness and people do it not just they want to make money or they want to make a, a, it a living is is a kind of uh, is a kind of service to the muse hey. to the goddess so it's a, it's, it's a very different scenario but then poets are laughed at you know uh, because uh, uh, poets don't have money nobody wants would like to marry his daughter to a poet and so to say especially nepali poet <laughs> or an indian poet you know you have you have this uh, very very strange people don't uh, uh, people want everybody people hold poetry in high esteem but nobody pays them or nobody you got very little money to you can survive with poetry i i followed this passion for some years and try to uh, make a living but you can't you have to travel you can you can abroad and uh, do all kind of things and uh, uh, write in june journals and newspaper write columns run a literary magazine a publishing house and then go to america and teach at universities or europe and london and you know germany so a poet has to do a lot uh, in in these parts of the world 
so it's, it's, it's I think it's, it's a big challenge. Uh, Kabir, uh, and, you know, Indian poet says, Sufi poet, Bhakti poet says, if you want to be a poet, first put your house on fire and come with me and be a poet. So poetry is that kind of formidable thing. Poetry is not just a kind of fancy thing and you, take, you write a, a fiction and you get advanced reality and you hang out in these, these uh, LA clubs. It's, it's, poetry is more of a commitment to life. And that's why you rise above uh, others and you, you work for them, you speak for the humanities. So the, the whole whole paradigm, the whole uh, idea of what literature stands for in these countries, especially in Nepal and India, and, and, and little languages, you know, Punjabi, Bengali, Malayalam, Kannad, you know, it is different than than this uh, this newfangled idea of uh, of making it a big money and, and living uh, and, and like a star. Uh, so, it, it, so young poets have to understand that, you know, when once uh, when I want to become a poet in Rajasthan, I met this very famous uh, American poet, David Ray. Okay. was founder, uh, editor of uh, uh, this very famous uh, American magazine, New Letters, from you know, okay. Wisconsin, uh, Kansas City. And he said, uh, you, you, you you want to be a poet? Uh, I would say, uh, you you will not make much money, but you will travel the world. And his his words were prophetic. I travel over the world. I mean, of course, you uh, uh, invest, uh, poets make money, uh, novelists make money. Uh, but uh, in, if, you, if I had stayed... Only in Nepal or in India, I would have, you know, starved. So it's, it's, yeah. uh, for, for poets who live in Nepal or India and write just poetry, it can be very uh, even even journalists like uh, Sir Pradhan, just writing for a newspaper. It doesn't have, or writing a column. It doesn't make. Yeah. Uh, I never a, a copy editor or or or, or, or a managing editor or you know a, a reporter becoming very rich and building a house uh, with his journalism. So even journalists is difficult to make uh, make money. So. Actually, uh, writing, uh, journalism, and in poetry is more for the sake of justice, for the sake of truth, and our, our commitment to our conscience and Passion. serve the society. As Kabir says, uh, I'm standing on the crossroads of life. Put your house on fire and come with me. So the specific reason of uh, asking you this question was because you travel the world and teach creative writing. So I'm sure you interact with a lot of young poets, a lot of young writers. And so you can bring out a perspective and you can bring out that thing in front of us, the reasons why, I mean, like you said, you know, that maybe um, the way I have understood is that we really need to improve a lot to reach there. You know, poetry is a commitment. I am, it is passion. And since it doesn't pay, like you said, and it's not very easy to, you know, make your both ends meet with writing, with words, with poetry. So I think um, that, that is uh, one of the reasons for, you know, people not being able to commit that much time or effort to that particular passion of theirs or, you know, and that particular, uh, you know, uh, because poetry, I feel, uh, is more to do with emotions. So you can't, uh, like you said, somebody, if somebody says, I want to be a poet, I don't think he can ever be a poet. You just cannot just want to be a poet. You will just be a poet, you know. On your own, if you are, if you start writing your feelings out in a, you know, in verses, you will just be a poet one day. So you really can't be, you know, I want to be a poet is, is something I feel is, is a far-fetched dream, I would say. Am I right, you know, sir? Yeah, you're right. And the thing is that, uh, you know, even even fiction, I mean, regular writers can make a living, you know, even yeah. how, how much will a big publisher pay to write a, a short story book or novel? I mean, even Penguin or Harper Collins, it wouldn't pay you much to make, make a living with that. You know, even right. like fiction. It's only one or two books they, they plow down. One or two. And they make yeah, agreed. And agreed. Is, it's, it's a kind of very uh, old uh, capitalist game that uh, yeah. one hero and the rest are clowns and they hang out, you know, uh, they kind of celebrate one one hero. So the whole hero worship, even, even if I, I don't think how much Penguin uh, India or, uh, would pay or, or Harper Collins would pay. I mean, I, I am I'm in publishing. I know that you can make a living or build a house in Delhi or in Kathmandu. I mean, it's very hard for even a fiction writer to to make it a is. living. I um, agree. So you have to be a writer. You have to do a lot of work, a lot, lot of other things, which are yeah. not uh, fiction. Uh, or yes. uh, for me, I did I, what I did was to travel the world and to teach in universities. And uh, but the uh, thing is, in India, and Nepal, or in Asia, uh, universities are run by these uh, very uh, uh, academic uh, scholarly critics, they don't teach creative writing. They, te they no. only teach criticism. 
and they have their own fangled ideas of uh, of uh, yeah. postmodernism and this very uh, very uh, hydro uh, pedantic uh, kind of uh, kind of uh, notions of milton and uh, restoration and shakespeare uh, it's very funny that then a, a real living writer is never brought to the school uh, to, right. uh, because rewriting has yet to come uh, so it's, it's a big challenge for a, a great writer mm -hmm. to survive in asia uh, because uh, it's, it's, uh, you can't uh, make a living still because you never uh, like i get to, to go and stay in a university and, and teach or, or be a visiting writer and i get money which i can uh, which, I, uh, which is enough for me but in here uh, the universities are run by uh, even academies are run by these uh, uh, literary critics who are uh, specialists in some specific area like uh, mm -hmm. PSL, restoration period elizabeth area you know it's kind of very very specified and in like an 18th century uh, kind of thing so uh, the, uh, it's very challenging for a writer in south asia to live and make a living i agree, I agree sir. thank you well, i'm really uh, thankful to you for your uh, views on this i would uh, so can i request you to read a quick poem from uh, of yours oh sure yeah so uh, i mean maybe as you talked about uh, uh, new york and when i teach uh, maybe i'll read a poem uh, from there uh, yeah. New York. And uh, so this is uh, uh, because I, 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 I traveled all over the world and I went to New York and I was yes, so sir. happy that this is the world where humanity shares, you know, that it's, it's a big, big world. Anybody who comes there is welcome. And you feel like you are next day, uh, you, you know, you go to Europe or you go to Asia, you, go to, uh, you know, you'll never be. Uh, I, if, uh, I go to Bangladesh, I'll not be Bangladeshi. I go to Germany, I won't be German or French, you know. Mm -hmm. When you go to New York City, you're a New Yorker the next day. It's a, it's a beautiful city which shares the dream of humanity because it's a city of immigrants. I'm not say for the rest of America, but as, at least New York is yeah. a very special place. And okay. how you become a New Yorker, this poem is about. Uh, okay. My, okay. Uh, okay. You are a New Yorker. Uh, it's uh, on a blizzard in the bones. Uh, okay. It's uh, about uh, uh, New York City. You are a New Yorker. The day you learn to notice sparkle of sullen silences, snapping the darkness of them burrows, or stop taking notes of wild blizzards, racing along the signature show, you are a New Yorker. The day you start hearing Gaga songs in the screeching subway cars, and stop saying, I don't know no Spanish, to Latino builders, you are a New Yorker. The day you start understanding the thick jumble of subway announcements, or roadside pronouncements, you don't have to be a rocker fader, to be a generous guy, you are a New Yorker. That you stop making free state and island ferry to click a perfect shot of Statue of Liberty, or stop visiting Times Square at night and forget to find a way out of his labyrinth, or learn to walk the Brooklyn Bridge without a secret desire to dangle a padlock on one of its rafters, or stop seeing Walt Whitman, Walt Whitman sitting atop its edge, looking for his beautiful boys and vagabond fairies entering the sheltered bay, you are a New Yorker. Now do you stop feeding spy dogs at Kent Central, recognize the homeless that hang out at Port Authority or Jackson Heights? Now do you pass through the shrunken midnight of Sutman Boulevard or Jamaica subway station without holding your breath in terror, you are a New Yorker. Now do you start loving Starbucks coffee, wafting along the white glassy Manhattan malls, or learn to chew the Brooklyn bagel, a lap of the steaming loneliness of chatty dog walkers around Central Park, or learn to make love and forget the face of your partner, you are a New Yorker. That you stop guessing the origin of blonde teenager, reading the current issue of the New Yorker, stop looking at the bare shoulders of the Vietnamese girl sitting on the free Wi-Fi table near the entrance of So Nice Village Cafe, opening and closing like a red lips on the first day of winter snow, then you pass by Magnolia Bakery loaded from famed cupcakes on moon-sized cookies. Then you stop visiting White Horse Tavern to pose against Dylan Thomas's drunken portrait. Or stop hearing John Lennon's voice climbing the fire escape ladders of Hotel Chelsea. Or stop looking for the room where she gave Leonard Cohen a blowjob. You are a New Yorker. Then you stop gawking at gay couples on L train, romancing like Bollywood couples are fervently discussing pussy power, animal rights, or the ailing pets of parents. 
that you stop staring at the dark cues of William's fur, their curls dangling off of the black velvet caps. Like Lord Shiva's sacred serpents, you are a New Yorker. They, the day you learn to laugh like a Latino bartender, smile like a Filipino waitress, standing beside a stuffed rose pig like a queen, or start looking at the cleavage of the new display at Central Park, or then to check your seat in the subway for a stain of shit the homeless might have left for you, you are a New Yorker. And finally, the, girl, the day the girl from Cleveland, Ohio, behind the counter of Greenwich Cafe, gives you an email, offers a free top up on your coffee, or lets you take her out, you are a New Yorker. That was quite a sneak peek into New York. <laughs> <laughs> I said, it's, a, it's, New York. it's called a blizzard in my bones. I love New York in a big way, and uh, I, 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 I'm missing it so much. So I read it uh, today for you. Yeah. And it's like a kind of perspective on how you go from how you, how, how you look at the outside world, which, yeah. which, belong, which kind of welcomes you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. I will move on to uh, Sarat, sir, now. So, sir, I have a few questions for you. I would. Uh, the first question is that. Um, we, we, we all know that culture, you know, shapes, uh, has a great role in influencing our mindset. How do you feel has, you know, um, Nepalese culture impacted or directed the pen of the Nepalese writers? Um, you know, the, the, if you look at the, you know, the Nepalese uh, cultural uh, things, are we, I mean, it is a cultural mojik. You will see that Nepal mm -hmm. has uh, more than 123 uh, races, I mean, ethnic peoples living in uh, oh, really? uh, Nepal. Yeah, yeah. And and okay. these speaks a around uh, equally 124 or 25 uh, languages, you know, all over the Lengal. Maybe the, some of the people speaks very, uh, they are the only few people who speak the language, but Nepali is the language that speaks by all over Nepalese people. And, but, the, you know, the and the, you see the, the and every, for example, if a poet is from one uh, uh, ethnic group, like I uh, say, Guru, so the, his culture is reflected in his poetry. If he's a Thakali, so we have a poet, a great poet, Hopi Shirzan. He was a Thakali guy. And, and, and he was, and his poetry, if you look at his poetry, it re reflects his cultures in his poetry. So, uh, so, so you see, you know, there is a, not a general Nepali culture we have. We have the cultures of different people. So for example, I belong to Nepali culture that belongs to Kathmandu. So the people of the Kathmandu who writes, I mean, Nepali people who writes poetry in Nepali, that is a reflection of his culture, you know, reflection of his Kathmandu culture, reflection of his day-to-day uh, -day, uh, cultural things, you know, and that is reflected in his poetry. So um, as uh, you used to know, he's very well, he has been in Nepal for a long time, you know, since that, that is the uh, reflections of the uh, culture is always there in our poetry. Even if you look at the poetry of the, um, uh, like, uh, uh, Devkota, you know, you see the reflection. But if you look at the poetry, that is written outside Nepal. For example, okay. the poetry from Darjeeling, poetry, Nepali poetry from Darjeeling, Sikkim, maybe from Dehradun or Asham, even beyond that, Myanmar, you will see uh, in, in their poetry, you see the uh, reflection of a Nepali culture, because they don't have the diversity like uh, we have in Kathmandu or we have in Nepal. Because okay. outside Nepal, they represent as a Nepali, not as a Newari or Gurung, Tamong, other cultures, you know. Uh, uh, they represent as a, a Nepali, as a, a whole being. So you will see uh, the Nepaliness in their poetry. In mm -hmm. Nepal, you will see the uh, ethnic cultures is, is more dominant in the poetry of uh, Nepali written in within uh, Nepal. Okay, okay, but, uh, that is good insight. Yeah, yeah, thank you, sir. That was a good insight. Uh, moving, I'll move on to Mr. Arun. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Bandana. Yes, sir. I, um, you know, I've got the, you know, there, there is one guy, uh, Norzan Sangden. He's a poet from uh, Dazzlings. So okay. he has uh, written one of beautiful poems. Uh, and this uh, poet, uh, he uh, participated in a workshop in Chandigarh many years ago, maybe in 1983, 84. There was okay. a workshop of a poetry of a people of a different, you know, uh, um, uh, different uh, parts of India. So he okay. uh, represented uh, that poetry workshop in Chandigarh. After that, he had uh, written one poem. That's beautiful poems. So I'll just read out poem uh, before you move on to Arun. Okay, Okay, okay sir. Yes, sir. A memory I am. 
this is uh, this poem was uh, translated by another guy, uh, Northern Rumba, and this poem is written by Northern Sande. A memory am I, escorted in garden, this city of Chandigarh. We arrive here, walking on the invisible, invisible footstep of life destiny, opening up the closed cupboard of the heart. A gift we exchange pain, we exchange our location. Making a wreath of wounds woven with words, we garlanded each other. We exchanged fear also. The railway junctions is coming near. I am sending you my fearful hands to you. Say goodbye. Homebound, seated on the rickshaw. Please lick the wounds of this parting in the sunshine of this farewell. I too shall drink it till it spill over the eyes. Grain clouds of dazzling. Am I? Krishna ji, you are a scorching street of Jaipur. Manglesh ji, you are the sprawling field of UP. You are the shining dune of Rajasthan. Vikram ji, you are the dark rays of Jambu. Samsir ji, you are the serene Lucian's lake of Kashmir. Fayez Dilan ji, you are the adolescent mendicant of the Golden Temple. Bedi ji, in a young but as old journey of our strength and dream, a world in our self we are. If ever you soft moment get against the sharp throne of memory, if ever you remember me, look at the face of processions. I shall very much be there. Look at the youthful smoke poofed off, lay in the uh, somewhere in the uh, somewhere in the crossroad. Uh, somewhere in the crossroad, uh, behold me, behold me, uh, in the plights of the polygate friends, who is still painfully unable to call a bicycle his own. The other one, they say, is an MA. You find me in the shoes of this age, running out like an auto rickshaw. Behold me in the testimonial long ailing inside the rick rickety's uh, horse. Uh, yes, I shall be there, be maze, peddling through this life with the alcohol in Trevon, singing the pathetic song, Behold me at the Bhagavan pace of Varen, denuded, denuded landscape. Behold me at the embrace of young lovers under a shadow tree. I shall be there. Behold me on the pal bearer Palberry, son of the dead fathers, behold me, but in the empty and cold pocket and wallet, in, in spite of compulsions to take home a chocolate to young brothers, you, yes, look at your feet, I shall be there somewhere, yes, I shall be there somewhere in your memory, if ever you remember me. That is the poet written by Northern Sanson. Beautiful, beautiful imagery, and, sir. Very beautiful and, imagery. Yeah, yeah, and he also... Um, you know, mention the name of the poets he met, like Samsezi and the yeah. Mangleji. Is I think he's a Hindi poet. He recently died. I think uh, Yusu Manglis Dabalkar. He died recently, maybe a few months ago, uh, because of Corona. Okay. Manglis Dabral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dabral. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He also mentioned. He met. He also mentioned him this poet. Yeah. Over to Bandana. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. We really uh, exceeded our time limit, but I thank would uh, I would just uh, request Mr. Arun to address one question of mine, and then we would wind up. So, um, Mr. Arun, uh, we all know that we have been going through pandemic times for last one year. It's been really, uh, you know, uh, turbulent times, and we've all had very, we've all faced losses and tragedies and pain and, you know, things that we hadn't experienced earlier. And the writer community really came up forward and still, you know, um, maintained the momentum by writing about it, by still bringing out, giving voice to the people's emotions and feelings. Do you think that writers across the globe and specifically the Nepalese writers have helped people in dealing with such turbulent times, in such turbulent times? Um, I think it's a really tricky question. I mean, it depends like what kind of uh, poetry like they have been reading, right? Like even in mm -hmm. Nepal, we have like different uh, kind of poets, like uh, some poets, they really write, you know, very optimistic poems, 
but yeah. most most of the poets are like really they walk are like really pessimistic you know i made mm -hmm. you sir when i was like maybe 18 or 19 and he used to tell me like you know try to write happy poem sometime you know jokingly because he used to tell me that poets you know often write you know very sad and uh, dark uh, poems you know but yeah. uh, saying that i think even through those poems uh, i think you know people have been really have been uh, uplifted by by i think uh, poems written by nepali poets in the sense because they have lost their loved ones and i think words can really comfort and move uh, you know a broken heart so i think uh, it has really helped in this uh, pandemic thank you for i personally write a lot of inspirational and optimistic poems so i know that <laughs> during these times yeah. yeah. i try to maintain that momentum comfort me even if i was feeling though i would write a hopeful one <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Manas, i'm really sorry manash for exceeding the time limit but discussions were you know quite engaging so i couldn't just cut short on uh, anybody's views uh, thank you everyone for joining us uh, today it was a fantastic experience of hosting all the three eminent people it was a privilege and an honor of asian literary society and personally for me to engage in such uh, fruitful discussions uh, i would just like manoj uh, would you want to yeah uh, yeah sorry uh, there was a network jitter from my end so no deep gratitude to our esteemed guest yusuf sir sarad and anand sir sir and arun ji it was indeed a delight to hear the poems and piece of prose that uh, you shared with us today and special thanks to vanna for such a nice uh, moderation today i would also like to thank our audience because i see a lot of comments from them and i was actually highlighting them intermittently so the recording of asia forum chapter 2 uh, nepal will be uploaded on our official youtube channel very soon thanks again for all your presence and participation uh, we will again meet tomorrow with philippines chapter with a new set of writers thanks to all of you thank you everyone thank you. Have a lovely Thank you.